Hello everyone, I hope you have a nice conference. Welcome to my talk about AGL's continuous integration and automated testing infrastructure and about some infra updates. My name is Jan Simon Müller. I'm the release manager for AGL and I'm also taking care of the uh, backend infrastructure. So, AGL's continuous integration and automated testing is there to fulfill a couple of goals. A, we want to ensure the stability of the AGL unified code base. This is a Linux distribution for use in the automotive industry and it's based on top of the Okta project. We also want to provide fast, a fast feedback loop to the developer. So this should happen for each code change on the available platforms, but also for the applications that uh, we develop. And the tests need to run on each supported hardware and on each image variant out there. So how do we do this? Um, we host our code in Garrett. Uh, we have a CI builder, which in our case is Jenkins. Um, and well, we need something to run tests either in virtual machines or even better on real hardware. The catch is that the hardware might be in different locations. The hardware might not be publicly available. Uh, so it's hard to come by uh, some of these boards, which is why such an automated setup makes it easy for developers to get feedback on their changes, even if they do not have a slew of different hardwares uh, on their table. So for the board uh, farm management, we use Lava. Um, the feedback is then kept uh, currently in Garrett with uh, messages back to Garrett. Um, the uh, initial plan was to use the kernel CI web UI and uh, extend that with uh, a test tab. Um, that's work in progress. The kernel CI um, uh, web UI is redone. So we are waiting for the upstream project here to be redone. So currently we close the loop by messaging straight to Garrett uh, to the developer. This is how it looks like. Um, we have our Git repos. Uh, the changes get built, we host then the build artifacts, and then we trigger a job uh, through Jenkins in the Lava lab. Um, this will then uh, push the job down into a worker, um, a slave basically, there can be multiple. Um, they are remote, uh, they can be distributed, um, and um, then we collect the results. And this gives us the possibility to do a fast feedback loop um, for the developers. Let's take a look. For Garrett, uh, we host our Git repositories there. It also provides us with a patch review workflow and a patch management. It has a web UI and uh, uh, you can integrate it also with your LDAP. Um, we can trigger jobs in Jenkins. So there's a Jenkins plugin to Paul Garrett. Our server is at the URL below here, garrett.automotivelinux.org. Our Jenkins uh, is the build scheduler CI builder um, 
it will retrieve the updates from Garrett, will trigger jobs. We have two main categories. Uh, one is a platform build, which builds uh, full images, and one is an application type build, which only builds a single application, which is, of course, faster. Um, to give you an idea, a full image build t would take uh, four hours from scratch uh, if it's uh, using the cache. Uh, we are down to 45 minutes an hour depending on the speed of the builder. It can go further down. Um, the best time was like 30 minutes. But if of course it depends on the size of the image. Um, if, you have, if you have an image with chromium in then um, that will take long, for example. Now, the application jobs, they are very smaller. They use the SDK, they use a previous, previously built image, and they only build the application in question. So the build phase is a matter of minutes, let's say five to 10 minutes, and then we have the application built and can run testing on a previously created um, disk image. All that happens on build.automotivelinux.org and um, is triggered through Garrett. Um, a platform build, as I said, uh, is a, a build of whole images. It's a whole stack of Yocto layers that we built and um, it takes quite long. The shortest path is about 30 minutes, but um, we have a few images that take longer. We use um, a templating tool called Jenkins Job Builder, which uh, is uh, developed by the OpenStack community. And with this, we do statically pre-create our Jenkins jobs. Um, you can also use, for example, Jenkins DSL or similar. You comparable is also GitLab CI or whatever other new new ones are there. Um, downside of Jenkins Job Builder is that you tend to create a lot of jobs because the you basically expand the matrix um, for for each machine for each branch. Um, so you create a lot of jobs. Lava is our board farm tool. It's basically a scheduler which allows us to execute tasks either on real physical board hardware that's uh, for what is what was made for or on a virtual hardware. Um, it's a board farm, board lab management tool, essentially, and it splits the workflow between the test developer on the one side, uh, the developers on the one side, and the admins that uh, manage the, the boards, the actual physical hardware in the lab. Um, so you basically deal uh, with the boards as if they were servers in a rack. It has a distributed approach, which is very powerful because you can have remote labs wherever the boards are and still access them. As I said, it takes away the board maintenance from the developer tester and it allows also for easy access of multiple developers to um, a development board. And um, the uh, uh, one important feature is that it saves you from a lot of the SD card juggling. So that will be uh, a, a good benefit because you can actually run tests faster um, if you do not need to juggle and write out SD cards, which takes a long time. Um, this is the structure. Uh, basically, we host a Lava master, which has the web UI, which distributes the jobs. Uh, we have workers with the devices under test attached. 
uh, there can be multiple of them and um, yeah that's how they uh, how the setup looks like now in reality uh, things uh, can then look like this um, on the left side you have here a set of devices under test with power control serial and a network and the uh, worker node is up here provided by this um, um, minnow board in this case uh, or the larger you get up here in a rack um, with multiple devices under test in a stack now if you if you are curious how to set this up uh, we use uh, Lava Docker, which is developed by the Kernel CI project. Uh, this is a Dockerized version of Lava. So there are two components um, in there. One is the master and one is the worker. And on the worker, you connect the devices under test. And um, that is where uh, you connect your boards, you need um, power control, you need serial, and you need a network for network boot. You can set up um, things like um, SD card muxers and so on. That is possible, a little more complicated to wire up um, in the test shop, but that's possible. So, uh, if you want to try that at home, the simplest setup uh, is in the README there with uh, just a master, a worker, and QMU. Um, in the Drake Kids jobs, we have uh, two helpers. One is called Lava CLI, which is the uh, CLI tool to connect to the Lava server. Um, and we have a little template generator um, in Relang scripts. So this creates jobs um, basically using the AGL URLs and using the test description that we host. So in Lava, we execute um, a set of actions and we host these in our QA test definitions. And Relang Scripts is just a wrapper, a template generator that allows us to generate our CI jobs and send them off to Lava. So that's a quick intro. Um, what happens then in Lava once you send a job uh, is basically Lava will boot the board to a shell, which means it needs to power up it needs to instruct the bootloader, which is usually QMU, but also can be UEFI, Pixie, uh, Fastboot. There are a lot of uh, options there. Um, and in the end, we need to be able to drive the board over the serial connection or over SSH is also possible. Um, basically, we can then do anything uh, that we can drive over a shell or terminal. We can test software components either in uh, QMU VMs, we can test our software running on a real target. We can also test peripheral hardware components. Um, with some effort, you can also create a device group and uh, wire up a test which means that multiple boards do actually boot up and interact with each other. That is possible. Um, Lava is not good for um, UI side tests. If you need that, then go and look at OpenQA from the SUSE project, which is there for dealing with uh, UI work where you say I need uh, this rectangle be look like this um, type of um, tests. 
also we need you um we need to contribute more lava test definitions to enhance the code base to make the ucb more uh, uh, more stable and we also welcome new lava worker labs uh, for more boards uh, for community boards imx8 for um, yeah to enhance the the board coverage here This now brings me to the updates on our SIAD infrastructure that uh, happened lately and that will uh, show you the progress that we made there in uh, the last couple of months. So we added PyAGL. PyAGL is a PyTest based test framework. It's a new test framework for the AGL services. Um, it's written in Python, it's using PyTest, so it's very simple to develop on and very simple to use. Uh, for example, you can just invoke PyAGL. There are markers, uh, for example, for jobs that, that require hardware like radio, for example. And uh, those can be excluded if you said not hardware required. There are tests that require internet access. If that's not the case in your test environment, you can say uh, not internet. Um, or you can combine both not internet and not hardware required. So that's pretty straightforward to deploy. And we have this active in CI already. The tests have been developed by uh, Eddie and um, the integration has been uh, done by Scott, so kudos to them. Here's an example run. Um, I just started up uh, a QMO virtual machine. I limited the Ethernet, uh, the, I limited the network interfaces to Ethernet and then said uh, it's no special hardware attached and we don't have access to the internet, uh, which rules out uh, GeoClue and uh, weather to some extent um, as they require working network. The next change that was done was that for all the service widgets, um, we do now build the coverage widget, which means we do a GCOF based uh, instrumentation of the service. And at runtime, we have a wrapper which will produce the coverage data. Um, installing the widget in question, it will run the tests and then. Um, report the coverage of our services. This is deployed in CI and it will report back the uh, lines and branch coverage um, of the services. The heavy lifting was done by Scott and um, yeah, we have uh, also a few more things in um, the pipeline. So quarantine will uh, add the upsquare board back. Um, that means we will boot with the uh, QMO artifacts. We built x86 in uh, the uh, through the machine QMO x86, and the upsquare board uh, will have to use these artifacts. Um, also, we want to see that the graph that the uh, Compositor uh, runs and uh, we see a, a home screen. So or we, we see a, a screen coming up. Uh, Marius is working to add a snapshot um, tool and uh, write a comparison test. Uh, so we can actually test that the Compositor comes up on all boards. We will not um, um, 
basically test all the UI parts, but we'll make sure that the compositor is up. And we have more work coming up on GitLab to extend the mirror to uh, uh, allow more features to be used there. Now what's next? Um, we also will uh, build more images. So currently the main image is the AGL demo platform, but there is an instrument cluster expert group and they will define, come up with new images that uh, uh, use containers. So there are more uh, images that will need to be built. Uh, also in the instrument cluster EG, there are requirements to do static code analysis, to do uh, linting on the recipes. Uh, so there is more coming on that front. Um, we will have new hardware being added. So the AGL reference hardware um, has been uh, shipped and uh, the board that you see here um, is now available. We'll put it into CI um, and um, we'll also research ways how to easily allow remote access to the boards in the farm. Um, there are also uh, experiments being done how to enable a video, video capture so we can actually um, take a closer look at what the boards actually um, display and make that easily available. Now, what infra updates uh, are there? So um, we have now a GitLab mirror available and uh, the, that is on gitlab.com slash automotive grade Linux. Uh, currently we mirror all our sources there. And uh, the first step is to provide a way to easily switch the uh, source URIs between Garrett and the mirror um, to provide additional redundancy um, and um, allow further development here. Also, um, we have done a, a larger uh, rework of our doc site. Um, Shankar Boron Gosh uh, was our Google season of docs uh, intern and he reworked the, the documentation site. Um, now it's all in one Git repo and the rendering is done by read the docs. So that's easy um, to update. Check out the new doc site and there's a guide how to add new documentation there. Thanks for joining. I will be available for questions in the chat um, and online. Enjoy the conference and uh, we welcome your contributions to AGL. Thank you.